Now, right now, I'm going to talk about how to raise up people to serve God in your church or the people around you. How can you raise them up spiritually? The first thing, when I do evangelism, in the process, I always lay hand on people to experience the Holy Spirit. I explain to them about God, the love of God, and how God is kind to us, how God is good, and how we can experience God when we pray to Him, and how we can experience His peace and love and joy and burdens go away. So I explain all this, and then I pray for the person. The person experiences the Holy Spirit. And then I will ask them, have you experienced anything during the prayer? And the person says, yes, I have experienced peace or burdens go away or comfort or power or electricity. Then I tell the person, that's great. God has blessed you. Do you want God to continue to bless you? If you want, then I explain the gospel and lead the person to repentance and trust in Jesus and have salvation. And then I will tell the person to continue to love God, to, to read the Bible, to come to church, and also to come to continue experience the Holy Spirit. In my church and in my training program, I always help people to continue to experience the Holy Spirit because that is very helpful, very helpful. Because when people experience the Holy Spirit, they see that God is real. And they see that God can take away the burdens and their unhappy feelings, their anger or sickness. So God can take away these problems. So they see that God is real. And then I will tell them this, okay? So I will let them know, you know, when you experience the Holy Spirit, when we pray for you, you experience the, the work of God, the presence of God, and it's so beautiful. It changed your life, it helped you. And one day, and I will tell them, one day you can pray for other people to experience the Holy Spirit also. So do you want to be used by God? And I will motivate them by telling them to motivate them to serve God. How to motivate? The first assignment. How? God is full of blessings. God has all the blessings in the world, including money and health and everything, including a good wife or husband for you. It's all in, He can provide all those for you. So, do you want this? Do you want to live in the plan of God and to be blessed by God? Now we don't serve God just to get this, but then this is one motivation. And then your life will be full of joy and peace and strength. So do you want to live like that? So if the person... Now, let me explain again. So God is full of these blessings. And then God has compassion on all the people in the world. So that's about God. He has compassion on all the people. He wants people saved. He wants people to go to heaven. He wants to bless people and he want to raise up Christians. He want the Christians not to be lazy Christians because lukewarm Christians, they will not have the blessings of God and they will have suffering and pain. God doesn't want us to live like that. He want to change the spiritual life of people so that people can enjoy life and have strength and joy all the time. So God wants to change our lives and bless people and he looks for, God is looking for people who will serve him to bless people. He's looking for people. Are you willing to be used by God? So I tell people, God has all the blessings and he wants to change his people. And he wants to use Christians who love God to change his people. So if people are willing to serve God, God will bless the whole life. For instance, for myself, as I said, my family was full of yelling and beating and also no money. I bought something after I worked, I started to work. Uh, when I was a teenager, I, I worked. And I bought something and then my father could take it and sell it to gamble, to get the money to gamble. So suddenly one day I found, oh, I lost my coat. Where did it go? Oh, my father took it. And so that happened to me. Normally, I would not be able to have good education. 
But after I believe in Jesus, I really love Jesus. I know God is so good. And then God provided for me that someone asked me whether I want to go overseas to study. And then I have the chance to have one bachelor degree in a Bible college and two master degree in a seminary. And also different kind of education. So this is God providing for me and raising my life up. So this is what God wants to do in your life. If you want to serve God, He will raise up your life. It might be different for each person. So I will encourage people on the day I brought them to Jesus. On the day I brought them to Jesus, I say, now you experience this peace and comfort. Is that good? And the person says, it is good. Do you want to one day help pray for people? Are there people who are suffering around you? And then they say, yes. There are people suffering around me. And you can help them. Not by your power, by the, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. So in my church and in my ministry, in my training programs, I always train people how to open up the hearts to experience the Holy Spirit, to have the power of God. And they'll handle the different problems. And then they, they can start to lay hands on people to have the power of the Holy Spirit. And then I will find people who are more open to God. Now some people, they experience the Holy Spirit, they don't respond to God. There are many people that experience the Holy Spirit powerfully. They experience great joy. But what they look at is always their own problem. Are there Christians like that? Let me ask you. Are there Christians like that? That they just look at the problems? Maybe a number of you are like that too. Let me tell you, if you just look at your problem, it seems that the problems never go away. Let me tell you, I have problems all the way, but I decide not to look at the problems because looking at the problem doesn't change it. But I look at God, I have a close relationship with God, and then God blesses me and helps me with the problems. And, and then these problems go away. So God has a way to solve a problem. Say it with me. God has a way to solve our problems. If we look at the problems, say it. We'll be overwhelmed by the problems. And we won't have much strength. But if we look at God, and believe that He is almighty, and believe that He loves us very much, and then when we follow Him, He will help us with our problem. And we'll have more blessings than ever. And then when we want to serve God, God is very happy. And God will raise us up and use us greatly to go a higher and higher level. Do you believe that? If you want your life to go higher and higher, the only way is God. The way is not just to go to find a good husband and good wife and go to find jobs. Now, you do have to look for jobs, look for work, but that's not the only way. The most important way behind all this is God who can give you the job. When you have a heart for God, He will bless you and He will use you. So I raise up people to serve God right from the beginning. When I tell them, see, all these people change because of the Holy Spirit. And then whenever anyone change, I'll ask them to share. Like, remember when we pray, ask you to share, and then it will encourage other people. And then for those who came on Sunday, you saw how the people experienced the Holy Spirit. And then many people were touched. But I tell you, some people are motivated to serve God because of that. But some people still look at their own problems. That is why Jesus said there are four kinds of soil. Remember that? Four kinds of soil. One is hard rock, the rose side. And then the other kind is the shallow soil. And the third kind is the, the uh, soil with thorns. And then number four are the good soil. The good soil, whatever they experience, they will bring respond to God and love God and obey God and follow God and then the whole life is changed. Whatever God does in them, they were excited. They're excited and follow God. 
And that's what happened to me when I experienced the Holy Spirit. I said, this is so wonderful that I can experience this love like that. I never experienced love like that. And then I continue to love God every day. And then I keep the joy of the Lord and the love of the Lord and the power of the Lord upon me. And then I pray for people. Now people experience the Holy Spirit differently. Some people experience very powerfully. Some people experience less powerfully. And some people deny experience at all. But it doesn't matter. But we just keep praying for people. And then I look for the good soil. Say it with me. I look for the good soil. People who respond to God. People who respond to God. When they respond to God, I will spot them. I will notice them and I will talk with them more and train them more. My energy is concentrated in these people. I will help anyone. Anyone who comes to us for help, I always help them. But when I help them, I always tell them, when you are helped, please think of how you can serve God. Please think of how you can bless other people. Now, in our group, I notice different people. There are people who got help, and then they forget about serving God altogether. But I've seen, for instance, recently, I see the, the girl I shared with you, that she had depression, unhappiness, and she has to take pills to sleep and to overcome her emotions. And she lost her job every few months. And she feels very unhappy, she has no friends. But then, when we keep counseling them and pray for them, and then she heard God in a dream to tell her to give up the guy, the guy who doesn't love her, give up the guy and to follow God. And then she was willing. And then I encouraged her and I said, you have this gift to hear God's voice and God can speak to you like that. If you love God, you'll hear God more and more and you can be used greatly by God. One day maybe you'll have a prophetic gift. So I told her that to encourage her. I keep encouraging people. You can go higher in God's plan and no one can run away from God. Very important. Psalm 24, 1. The world is the Lord's and everything in it. Everything in the world belongs to the Lord. And also Revelation 2.23, that He will search our hearts and reward us according to our deeds. He will search our hearts. He will look for people who love Him. And then He will bless His people, these people who love Him and follow Him. So it's very important that we raise up people who love God. Let me tell you, in a church, it's like a pyramid. Look at me, a pyramid. At the bottom are the Christians who are not stable. Always worrying, always have problems, always unhappy. Cannot, I would, are not willing to put down the problems, are affected by people, and have negative thinking and negative emotions. And don't pray much, and don't have strength from the Lord. These are the most numerous group in the church, the people who are weak. Now yeah, please turn off all your cell phones. And then the next level up are Christians who are more steady, but still they don't serve God. And next level up, Christians who serve God. And next level up, Christians who serve God and take care of the problems in their life. When they have unhappy feelings, negative thinking and negative feelings, negative subconscious mind, they work on it every day so that they become more and more joyful. Let me ask you. Yesterday we talked about putting out down the burdens and the hurts and the subconscious mind and then have joy and peace. When you went home, did you pray to keep that anointing? Did you pray? How many people pray to keep the anointing last night? That's good. I hope you keep praying every day. And keep obeying God and say, I want to serve God. I want to be used by God. So, I'm talking about the pyramid. And then you go high up. Are Christians who serve God with strategy? Uh, no. That's... With strategy, what does that mean? To find the plan of God. What is the perfect plan of God? For instance, for me, how can I go higher? God moves in my heart to direct me. Most important is the pastors. 
When I go to places, there are some pastors who just walk in and out and they don't want to learn. I'm not saying I have everything, but every person who is gifted in this some area must have something good to share. Some pastors have no motivation to learn and they have no motivation to apply it. They just say, I'll keep my way. Well, it's okay if the way is good. But some, Christian, some pastors are not able to raise up people to serve God in the church. And when you don't have people who serve God and serve God with strategy and with a good life, the church will be full of people who are for fornication, who are weak and sinning and unhappy, always need help. You'll be full of sick people instead of strong people who can help other people. So in the church, we want to raise up a prayer team. A prayer team. A team of people who can counsel people and pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit and bring them to Jesus. And then when they can do it, let them share with the group and encourage other people. So whenever these people experience something and a change, I ask them to share. It will encourage other people to go the same way. Now, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. It's more important to have people who are devoted to God, who take care of the problems, and seek the strategic plan of God. Now, what does strategic plan of God means? For instance, for me, I can be just ministering in one church, just take care of one church. That doesn't use my whole life, right? Yes. Because I have the gift of training. If I want to use it to the fullest extent, I should train people. And my target group should not be sick people. People who are weak and who don't even understand what I'm talking about. But it should be people who want to learn. So I hope you're there listening. Yes, I want to learn. And not like this. Sleeping here. <laughs> you won't get anointing by sleeping. But if you want to learn, yes, I can be raised up like that too. Now I hope there are people, you know, every time I ask you, how many people want to serve God? Many people raise their hand. The point is, afterwards, how are you? How are you doing afterwards? If you really carry on this anointing and this training, and also not only you carry on, especially for the pastors and leaders, and even for lay people. You have the heart to go back to your church and raise up more people. It's not just you. Now, let me tell you, my change is not after I became a pastor. When I was a lay person in a church, whenever I hear messages that are good, I will remember it, I will write it down, I will apply it. There are messages that I heard one time and it changed my whole life. I remember it. For instance, let me tell you, when I was a new Christian, at one time someone went to the church to teach about how to do Bible study, how to analyze a passage, to analyze by points, one, two, three, four, and then the, uh, uh, what are some causes and then some consequence, the causes and the consequence and write an arrow. And he taught us to write down one, two, three, four, and then the causes and the result. And to analyze the passage and look at the keywords. After he came one time, I start to analyze my Bible and write down one, two, three, four, and I use up a few Bibles like that. And some of these I've given away. And then I write a new one. And now I can look at any passage, I can analyze it right away. Just one message. I will learn it. And one message, our pastor, our church had an outreach, one time only in the outreach, and when I was a new Christian. And a pastor wrote down on the board, the passage is about salvation. Now which bishop also have now? That sins and the consequence of sin, the punishment of sin, and, and, and what Jesus did, and how we can be saved, and the fruit of salvation, he put down on the board. And I copied that onto my Bible. And now I remember it. And then I have used it ever since then. And then online, when I learned other people, when I experience the Holy Spirit, for instance, I would say, first I want to keep this anointing. Next, I want to serve God with this anointing. 
not just keep the anointing, but I want to serve God with anointing. Then when I pray for people, people can experience God. So I look for ways how to raise up the anointing, how to have a strong anointing in the Holy Spirit and pray for people. Now there are many people who experience the Holy Spirit at the same time as I. And then we explain the experience like this. One person said, oh, the evangelist touched me and just fell down and that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> she did not think about what she experienced. Yeah. She did not think about how to keep it, how to use it, even though I've talked about it in church many times. She did not hear. She did not listen. She did not remember. And it's just a one-time thing. And there were even pastors who experienced the Holy Spirit at the same time as I. But they dare not lay hand on people because they said, well, sometimes I lay hand on people, they don't experience anything. And they dare not ask. Now, I pray for people and ask. Why? Very important. Two reasons. For evangelism, I asked them what they have experienced. And they said, I experienced peace and comfort and all this. And I said, this is God working in you. And then, do you want God has blessed you like this according to the Bible? Do you want God to continue to bless you for your whole lifetime? If they're willing, I will lead them to Christ. And then for Christians, I pray for them. They experience this love, peace, joy, and uh, burdens go away, or comfort to the body, or power. And I said, isn't that good that you can experience God like that? Do you want to be raised up by God to bless people? So God has touched me and taught me to ask people what they experience. You probably have seen people experience the Holy Spirit. They may, maybe they cry, they fill with laughter, they fell down. But most evangelists and no, most pastors don't ask them what they experience. They just say, let them experience. Then they don't make use of this experience. But I always ask them, what they experience, do you want to keep it? Do you want to use the power of the Holy Spirit for your ministry? Do you want to use the power of the Holy Spirit for your spiritual life? And then you can be used by God greatly. I will always have encouragement based on the experience. Say this with me. I will always have encouragement for the person based on his experience of the Holy Spirit. So after he experienced the Holy Spirit, I explained that to him and then I will tell him how he can go higher and higher. For instance, to victory, I said to him, you can be a prophet and also to goodness, the two, two children of Bishop. And I hope they listen to me. They do have the personal problem. I hope they can put down the personal problem. But so many people, they just look at the personal problem. Oh, they're too big. Let me tell you, I have big problems too in the past. But I will continue to say, it doesn't matter because God is almighty. I don't have to be bothered by those problems. I can have the power of God to bless people. As soon as I experience the Holy Spirit, God let me use it because one member asked me to lay hand on her to drive out demons. A few days, a few days after I experienced the Holy Spirit. And then when I prayed for her, she said she experienced the Holy Spirit coming into her to drive out demons. Please turn off the cell phones. And then, so I drew out demons from her and she said, yes, she felt the evil spirit come out. And then, ever since then, I've been laying hands on tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of people. Because everywhere I went, I prayed for people. And many people experienced the Holy Spirit very powerfully. And I've raised up many people. But I also saw many lazy Christians. <laughs> I saw many Christians who refused to change. Who just look at the world, look at the problems, and never look at what how far they can go if they follow God. Let me ask you, are you motivated to go high in God's plan? Or do you still say, I have too much, too many problems with money and with husband and wife and uh, no, not me. Oh, pastor, you choose someone else, not me, I cannot do it. Are you like that? Or do you say, yes, Lord, I want to be raised up by you. Let me tell you, you don't have to have high education. You just need the heart to trust in God. And then you can be used by God. And then you need to keep that relationship every day. You need to read the Bible so you understand the teaching of God. And then you have the presence of God. And then you need to pray for people so you 
can exercise that. And then you see people change, and then you continue to change. Let me tell you what happened. Shortly after I experienced the Holy Spirit, the first time was that person I drove out demons in the church. That was just maybe three or four days after I experienced the Holy Spirit. And then they said, pray for everyone to bless them. So I prayed for everyone. And there were people there told me right away, I experienced power when you lay hands on me. And then I start to pray for many individuals in the church. And some of them cry for over an hour. And they told me the burdens go away. They, they were set free. And also, I even go out when I, there were meetings. There was one time a meeting. Uh, and I went to and I saw another pastor. And the pastor said, I have a member who had evil spirit. And I'm trying to find someone to drive, a famous pastor to drive out demons. I said, if you wait for that famous pastor, it will be a long time. I can go for you today. I can go with you today. So I went there and I drive out demons. At first the doctor, you know doctors don't believe in demons. Yeah. The doctor said, she has to go to the mental hospital mental. tomorrow. <laughs> but then after I prayed for her, she was all peaceful because she was totally out of control. When I went to her, when I prayed for her, she was like this. <laughs> and I seeing demons everywhere. And after the prayer, she was all peaceful. And the doctor said, the, doc, the pastor told me, the, the doctor said, if you have someone to watch her, she can go home now. <laughs> because she was all peaceful. Nothing happened. And then she has a friend there. Actually, she has a number of friends. She was a young person, so she has a number of young friends. And I said to them, okay, I drove out demons from her. I want to pray for you for protection also. So I prayed for all of them. And there was one young woman who stayed behind. And I saw that she was swaying in the power of God. I said, the power of the Holy Spirit is upon you. Open your heart. When she opened her heart, she started to laugh very loudly in the hospital next to the elevator. She was laughing very loudly. Ha, 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 ha. And then she laughed for about five minutes and then she started to cry. And she's crying in a very sad way. Oh, 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 very loudly for maybe about 20 minutes. And then she started to laugh again. And I asked her afterwards, I asked her what happened. She said she has been, she had depression, she had been hurt by people for years. And during the prayer, all these hurt feelings came out. And I told her, see how real God is. And then she has not been steady, going to church steadily. So I invited her to my church. And now she's a missionary. Later she went to study for ministry. That's how I raised the people. And one time I went to a church. And I asked the pastor, the, pa the pastor asked me to preach there. And I said, asked the pastor, is it okay for me to lay hands on people? And then he said, okay. Just ask the people go in the room and then you lay hands on them. And then afterwards we went to the room and I lay hands on them and then I asked them, did you experience anything? And there was a woman who jumped up. My back ache went away. And then a woman jumped up. My shoulder ache went away. And that was the first time I had healing in the prayer. And then from then on, I always pray for anyone with any, any kind of problem that gave me confidence. What is promised in the Bible, to lay hands on the sick, that they are healed, that I see that this come true now. And I pray ever since then, I've seen cancer patient healed. I've seen many kinds of sickness healed. So I'm a person like this. And in the seminary, I was teaching people who will be pastors in a very traditional church. And I didn't mind, I just lay hand on the people. I said to them, I experienced the Holy Spirit. I lay hand on you. Is that okay? They let me lay hand on them. And some Christians were revived. But someone reported to the president. And the president talked to me. Now very interesting. This president came from the United States. And then, um, I don't know if he, whether he raised it up first or I raised it up first that either he said, then come to my home and pray for my two sons and see what happens. Or I said, I can come to your home and pray for your two sons. So I went with him to the home and prayed for the two sons. They were young. 
And I prayed for them and asked them what they experienced. And they said, I experienced peace and joy. And the, and the president looked at that, wow, with open eyes. But at that time, I should have asked the, the president to pray for them too and then ask them what they experienced because he would have this power too. But he told me, even though this is true, don't lay hand on people in that denomination. But after that, there are people who are against me. So I'm saying I'm not afraid. Even though I have to leave the traditional church, but I have a wider way open for me. And then, when I first went out for mission work, I did not train the pastors. I just trained regular people. And I did not systematize the teaching. But as time goes on, I see it very important to train the pastors. So I, every time I ask, please arrange the pastors, most important, and devoted Christians. I don't want Christians to be dreaming or sleeping in a meeting because the, they won't learn and they will drag the whole class. But if people want to learn, then they can learn. And also, the, now we have assignments and then certificates so that people will fulfill this certificate so that they, they fulfill this assignment. That way, it will help people to pay a price so that you're learning something, so I can raise some people, so you can remember it and use it in your church. So I'm saying this is how I raise some people. Let me tell you, I've raised up a number of pastors and ministers and missionaries. Another, another, uh, there were four other missionaries. Uh, I've raised up at least five missionaries from my church where I experienced the Holy Spirit, at least five. One I just told you, another one like this. There was a mother who has two sons. I asked the mother about the two sons. And she said, I have two sons, they've been baptized. I said, if they've been baptized, but they don't go to church, that's not good. So I said, can I visit them? She said, yes. Now she's a Christian for years, but she has two sons who have been baptized and stay at home and don't go to church, and she will not tell me. She did not see the importance of this. But I approached her and I went to pray for the two sons. They both experienced the Holy Spirit. And I encouraged them to come back. And one of the sons came back. The other one did not. And this son later became a missionary. So I have tried to raise some people and I see, what I see is like this. One devoted Christian one Christian who has a strategy to serve God, who really dedicates his life to God and take care of his problems. This one Christian is more powerful than 1,000 or 10,000 lazy Christians. Is it true? Lazy Christians will not produce fruits and actually it will drag the church. So I hope that you will wake up to this. If you are lazy Christians and you think you might have excuses, I'm too weak, I don't have spiritual gifts, I'm not educated, my husband and wife are too bad, my children are bad, I don't have money, all these are not reasons because God will have the resources for you and I hope that you all say that. If we follow God's plan, then there can be revival. You know, if all the Christians are revived, they all love God. There is revival many times already in the world but now the revival is slow but today if you are really willing to change then you can have revival and also not only you when you go back to church now as pastors you can raise up people ask people who are willing to be trained and then you train them and then pray for them to experience the Holy Spirit and lead them to pray for other people take care of the problems in life and then they start to pray for people and then you have a prayer team that do evangelism, visitation, and raise up people's spiritual life so you have a team of people who can do spiritual help to people. Now when I'm away from Hong Kong, my team in Hong Kong, they can take care of the visitors. We always have people come to me because they saw my videos and they come for help. And my people can handle them. Yes. They can counsel them and pray for them and they can do evangelism. So this is something you can do and you can train your people to do. If you just do it yourself, you cannot do much. But you can train people to do. You can raise up more people. And also, not only in your church, 
then I hope you have a broad view. You want to bless other churches. You can go to other churches, train people. But when you go to other churches, don't tell the people to come to your church. <laughs> when you go to other churches, just train them, help them to be strong Christians, and also guide the pastor to how to raise up people. So the ability to, say with me, the ability to raise up people to serve God, and raise some people to serve God. I mean, train people to serve God. Are very important in ministry. Actually, are the most important ministry. You could have big meetings. You know, there are meetings like this. Everyone excited. They dance and sing, and they're very excited. But the change in life doesn't last. Sometimes the change in life doesn't last. But when people see how good God is, see how they can serve God with power, see how God, God can use them, then one person change. This person is more important than many. Now, to praise God joyfully is good. But many people, just they are just satisfied with praising God and singing happily. But that is not going to change the church or the country and that is not going to bring revival. Just that alone. People need to dedicate their life to God and see the importance and the blessings of God and then be trained. Be trained. Very important. If they're not trained, they cannot do much. For instance, for me, I can speak to anyone of different education level, different background, yeah. different problems, whatever it is, I can, I know how to do evangelism to them because I have been. I've done it I don't know how many times I have the experience of doing it to so many people. So anytime, anywhere, I see a Christian or see a non-Christian, I know how to help them. That's the training. And I want to say this. A lot of training did not fr come from other people. It's from God and from me. I train myself. I saw someone doing something. I say, how can I do it? I saw someone preaching energetically and I say how can I do that too and I saw people with anointing I say how can I have that strong anointing when you hear this is your heart touched is your heart greatly touched or are you just <laughs> I hope your heart is greatly touched and you say God I need to change. I can be changed. I can be used by God. I can be trained by God. You know, even this few days training, if you remember, you can use it. It's already very good. And you can, if you have Facebook, you can get online with your cell phone. You can watch this again. Listen to it again and learn it again. And then you can start to raise up people. Even if you're a lay person, you go back to church, you have your friend, you can talk to them, share with them, and encourage them and pray for them to experience the Holy Spirit. If you don't have evil spirit or serious sins or serious negative emotions in you, then you can start praying for people. Let me ask you, how many people here are willing to pay the price? You need to pay the price. It's not just go and do it. You need to train. You need to pray. You need to really spend time with God. You really take care of problems in God that you need to take care of all these problems with the help from God. How many people are willing to pay the price? Can you raise your hand? You want to pay the price. I want to be used by God. I want my life not to be wasted. I want my life not to be wasted. I want my life to be fruitful. You raise up your hand. You speak to God. You stand up to God. Only those who are willing to pay the price stand up. You pay the price, you stand up. I want to be used by God. I want to pay the price to pray. I want to pay the price to read the Bible. I want to be used by God. And I can be used by God. Now you cry out to God together. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. I want to be used by you. I don't want to waste my life. My life will go away very soon. Time goes fast. I have to face you very soon. Help me not to waste my life. 
Help me to be faithful stewards. That will love you. We're changed by you. We're motivated by you. That we receive training. That we love God. That we love people. And we want to bless them. We want to strengthen other Christians. We want to bring people to Jesus. We want to be used by God. Lord, we want to be used by God. I want to bless this country. I want to bless my church. And then will bless my life. Lord Jesus, I need you. Lord Jesus, I need you. Please use me. Raise me up higher. Raise me up higher. Raise me up higher and higher and higher. Lord Jesus, I don't want to just look at my problems. I want to look at you. I want to look at your goodness. I want to look at your heart. Look at your compassion. You have compassion on the people. Lord, help us. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, use me, use me, O oh Lord, use my life, O oh Lord, use my life, my Lord, use my life, my Lord, use my life, my Lord. Revive my life, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, oh my God, oh my Lord, I need you. Jesus have mercy upon me. Raise your hand to God. Lord Jesus, use my life. Use my life, Lord Jesus. Change my life. Oh Lord Jesus, help me to remember the teachings. Help me to remember how important it is that we experience the Holy Spirit and carry the power of God. Then we can bless more and more people. We need you. Now everyone speak to God. Lord Jesus, we need you to change our life. We need you to change our life. We need you to use our life. We need you to raise up our life. We need you to train us, to motivate us. Oh Lord Jesus, we don't want to be lazy. We don't want to be the wicked and lazy servant. We want to be the good and faithful servant, Lord Jesus. Please bring a revival to Liberia. Please bring a revival to Liberia. Please bring a revival to our church. Please bring revival to our family. Please bring change to our life. Help us to put down our burdens. We put down our burdens now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now use your hand. Put down my burdens. Put down my worries. All my worries. All my burdens. All my problems. I want to put down. I want to look at God. I want to look at God. God will solve my problems. God will help me. I want to put down all my problems. Lord Jesus, I want to be strengthened by you. I want to be strengthened by you. I want to be renewed by you. I want to bring people to Jesus. I want to bring revival to people. Lord Jesus, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, visit us. Come and visit us. Come and visit us. Oh, come and change our life. Oh, Lord Jesus, change our life. It's not just a one-time excitement. It's not just a one-time excitement. But we want to be changed all the time. We want to be changed all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I appreciate you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now everyone, raise your hand to God and pray for a revival. Revival to come.